take you back to three nights in 1973 when a band topping the world chart sold out the entire Madison Square Garden three nights in a row. Back to three nights, Jimmy Page danced in his silk dragon suits on stage. Robert Plant stunned the crowd with his incredible voice. John Bonham drove them crazy with his speed and John Paul Jones' rhythm blew them away. Let me welcome you to The Song Remains the Same, the Led Zeppelin live performances. Hello and welcome everyone to another part of the concert series. If you're new on my channel, hi, my name is Emma and I have a big love for 60s and 70s music and concerts. And in this series, I'm getting ready for concerts that I wish I could have attended, but, but because I was born a couple of decades too late, I never got the opportunity to. So today's video focuses on one of Led Zeppelin's most popular concerts, they played at Madison Square Garden in the summer of 1973. I'm gonna tell you about the history of the band, the concert film that was shot during these three days, and of course the incredible live show and music. I'm also gonna create this makeup look and hairstyle I would have worn to the show, and if you wanna see how I created this look and learn all about Led Zeppelin, keep on watching. So per usual, all I've done so far was just to apply some foundation and also a little bit of concealer to cover up my darker spots. I think I say this with every video, but the 60s were truly all about that flawless skin look and since I tend to break out a little, I decided to cover up my blemishes. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to use this really light shimmery color and apply it all over my lid with this brush. Since 1969, perhaps after seeing the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus and also the Woodstock movie, Led Zeppelin was thinking about making their own documentary. So they were kind of dreaming about making a movie that didn't only feature their performances, but also kind of focused on them as a band. So they really wanted to include a lot of behind the scenes and backstage sequences so that their fans would get to know them a little more and feel more personal with them. Peter Grant, the band's manager, wanted to make a big screen movie because he thought the band was too big to go on television and he also didn't like the sound quality of television, which was truly not that good back then. So the first attempt the band made to make a movie about themselves was in 1970, but they were not satisfied with the footage at all and so they deleted it. And if you're wondering why I'm telling you all of this, it's because it's bringing us to three magical nights Led Zeppelin played in July of 1973. They played at the Madison Square Garden for three nights in a row, 20,000 people attending every single night. And those three performances were released under the title The Song Remains the Same by Led Zeppelin and it's the concert that I'm focusing on in today's video. So let me start by telling you a little more about Led Zeppelin and the history of the band. And while I do that, I'm gonna go in with this darker greenish color and I'm applying this on the outer corners of my eyes to make them darker and more hypnotizing. This look is also kind of inspired by Charlotte Martin, who was Jimmy Page's girlfriend and she really had hypnotizing, gorgeous big eyes and I feel like this look is kind of inspired by her but also a lot inspired by just the groupie culture of the early 70s. So after playing his final show with his former band The Yardbirds in 1968, Jimmy Page started to look for a new lineup for his new group. He soon joined forces with Robert Plant and John Bonham, who were part of a band called the Band of Joy before that. The band was still missing a bass player, and so they joined forces with John Paul Jones, whom Jimmy Page knew from their time back as session musicians. And with him, the lineup of the band was finally completed. I'm gonna go in with this even darker sort of gray shimmery color and put it right on the very, very outer corner of my eyes for even more depth. I just want this look to be a little magical and very hypnotizing. So I'm just gonna put this right out here and not go in too far. Kind of making sure that I put it in the crease, just kind of like this. So after completing their first Scandinavian tour in 1968, the band made it to the studio to record their first album. So in late September of 1968, in only nine days, their album was recorded and mixed completely. And this was all financed by the money Jimmy Page still had from his time with the Yardbirds. So next up I'm going to use this little brush and I'm just going to blend this really well, especially the outside, to kind of make it a little more clean. So during their whole Scandinavian tour and when they started recording, they still went by the name The New Yardbirds. But Jimmy Page, who once dreamt of a super band with Keith Moon and John Entwistle of The Who, was dreaming about naming that band Led Balloon. However, he was planning on spelling it 
L-E-A-D and they were kind of afraid that people would read it as a lead balloon and so they went by Let and exchanged balloon for Zeppelin. And finally the famous name Led Zeppelin was born. So to add even more depth to my eyes, I'm gonna use this color again on this very tiny brush and I'm just gonna apply this underneath my lower lash line. According to the music journalist Keith Shadwell, Jimmy Page thought that the name Led Zeppelin was the perfect combination of heavy and light, combustibility and grace. So in November of 1986, Led Zeppelin secured a $134,000 deal with Atlantic Records. Until then, that was the biggest deal a new band had ever gotten and Led Zeppelin was more than pleased with the money. Because it truly meant that the record company didn't only believe in them, but thought they were something new, something different and the band that could take on the world. In their first year as Led Zeppelin, they didn't only finish four entire UK tours, but they also managed to record their second album, Led Zeppelin 2. Their second album was mainly recorded while they were on the road in North America. And it developed their mostly blues rock style of music even further, creating a sound that was heavy and hard, brutal and direct. So I really like how this is looking so far. I don't want to do the classic 60s cut crease or like too heavy of a makeup because I think Led Zeppelin kind of combines that chic element with that hippie and free-minded look. So I really don't want to play too heavy on the colors. So I'm not gonna do any eyeliner whatsoever, but I am gonna add some very interesting details later. I'm planning on using some ribbons and also some feathers. So let's get into that. But because I'm wearing so much blue and I kind of want to do something different, I am going with blue mascara. So I'm going to apply my mascara base per usual and then I'm going to put blue mascara over it. Charlotte Martin is actually seen wearing a lot of blue mascara and I think it looks very good on her and it matches the look and it's just something really different and eye-catching. So I'm going to do that. By the beginning of 1970, Led Zeppelin topped the charts, not only in the UK and US, but generally speaking worldwide. They also progressively started to shun TV appearances, making their statement that they wanted their fans to see them perform live and hear them on stage. There actually aren't really that many recorded concerts of Led Zeppelin, which is also why I chose this one. The song remains the same from 1973. Not only is it a phenomenal concert with a really interesting history, but it's also one of the very rare taped performances of the band. I am a huge Led Zeppelin fan and honestly this is one of the things that bugs me the most about not being able to see them live. That compared to the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Queen, the Who, there really aren't that many clips of them performing online. There isn't a lot of footage of Led Zeppelin performing in general and I think that's one of the reasons why I would have loved to attend this concert and why I chose this and I'm gonna link it in the description box like I always do because I want you guys to feel the experience of going to that concert and it is pretty much the only complete taped concert they ever did. So now let's go in with the blue mascara. So not only did Led Zeppelin not believe in taping their shows and showcasing it on TV, they also weren't big fans of the idea of releasing singles. So basically they thought that their music was best consumed as a whole and they wanted people to listen to the entire album rather than the singles. However, their manager, Peter Griffin, knew how important it was to release singles and talked them into releasing singles such as Whole Lot of Lover. After releasing their third album, Led Zeppelin III, they claimed their place as one of the most popular and most influential bands of the time and the era in general. So I love how my eyes are looking. It is very light, it is very different from what I usually do, but I think it is matching the Led Zeppelin motto perfectly. As you can see, I'm gonna show you the outfit later completely, but I'm wearing this really cool sort of kimono jacket that reminds me so much of Jimmy Page, and I think the blue goes really well with my eyes now, and I just really like that different touch of makeup. Talking about my look, let's talk a little bit about how Led Zeppelin dressed. So from the late 60s to the early 70s, their appearance started to change and so did their music. They started to wear elaborated flamboyant clothes and glittering moon and star outfits. They also started to change their show by adding lasers, a professional light show and mirror balls. They started traveling in a private jet they called the Starship. 
and started renting entire sections of hotels. There are a lot of records about Led Zeppelin thrashing different hotels pretty much all over the world, but there are a lot of sources claiming that those records are elaborating and that they had a reputation for throwing out TVs out of their hotel rooms, but that overall the thrashing wasn't as bad as most people think. On November 8, in 1971, they released their third album, which is variously referred to as the untitled album Led Zeppelin 3, or due to the symbols appearing on the cover, Sozo or Runes. Speaking of the symbols, I'm gonna put up a picture here of the four symbols the band chose. So basically everyone had their own symbol and I think this is so cool because it kind of showcases that they weren't only a band but also four separate people, musicians and artists. So as you're going to see, one of the symbols is a feather and that is why I decided to make a feather the part of my makeup look today. I have two really little feathers right here, I hope you can see them. I also have some bigger ones but I feel like they really take up too much space on my face. So I'm kind of focusing on the little ones and my plan with these is to glue them on below my eyes, kind of like this. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm just gonna use some regular lash glue, put it on the feather and then put it on my face. I've never tried this before, but I've glued real flowers and a lot of crystals on my face. So I hope this is gonna work the way that I imagine. I think because the feather is so light, there shouldn't really be a problem. So let's see. Just kind of making sure that I only apply a little bit of glue because I don't want the feather to be all stiff. So I'm just applying it very carefully, just a little bit, kind of in the middle of the feather. I was thinking about doing this with tweezers, but I think my hand will work better. I'm just gonna lightly press it on here. Well, that worked really well, actually. And I really like how it is looking. I'm just gonna put up my hair kind of like gotten a little stiff down here, but I think we're, we're still good. It still looks really cool. So now I'm gonna do the other side. Let's just do the same thing. So I have this really little like applicator thingy to attach the glue to like the middle part of the feather. Let's see how this is gonna go. This looks pretty well. So as you can see, I only really did a little bit of glue because as said, feathers are just so light. They don't really need a lot even them out. So let's take this one out a little further and down a little more. Okay, so I really like how this is looking. If you use things like feathers, you kind of have to keep in mind that they are natural sources, so you will not get two perfectly even ones, but I really like how this is looking, how it turned out. I think it adds something really, really special and interesting to the look. With 37 million copies sold, their third album was one of the biggest and most successful albums of all time. Their next album, Houses of Holy, was released in 1973 and it was a major success as well. They went on tour again and managed to consistently sell out large auditoriums and stages. So my camera just died and it also deleted the last clip I recorded, but I put on these gorgeous little details underneath my eyes and I'm gonna show you how I did it real quick. I wish I still had the footage of me applying them originally but I'm just gonna tell you what I did and I hope you can forgive me for that. So basically I used this gorgeous glittery ribbon. I got this at a craft store. If you're looking for things to put on your face if you're into like that 60s and 70s very expressive makeup, I would highly recommend you to go into like craft stores and art stores and get these little ribbons and basically things people usually decorate pictures or planners with because for me they really work super super well on the face. I have never had a bad reaction to any sort of glitter or any glue that I put on my face no matter if it's said use for face or not. This one also came with a peeling back. You can use this just like a regular sticker and kind of peel it off like this. However, if you have things you want to put on your face that don't have an adhesive on them, you can always just use lash glue that is perfectly safe for your face. And when I applied these, I just made sure that I didn't put them too high because I really didn't want to blot my eyes. So now they're far enough down on my face that I can still open and close my eyes. I could cry for the emotional songs and I could cheer to the crowd for basically the entire night. 
So the clip that's lost also featured a lot of the things I told you about the band. So let's get back into my notes and I'm just gonna tell you again. So at the Tampa Stadium in Florida, Led Zeppelin played in front of 56,800 people, beating the record set by the Beatles at the Shea Stadium in 1965. And if you want to know more about the Beatles, and not particularly that concert, but the Beatles in general and their beginnings especially, I made a concert series part about them and their performance at the Cavern Club. I'm gonna link it right here for you so you can watch that. Three sold-out shows were filmed at Madison Square Garden in July of 1970, which finally brings us to the concert I am getting ready for it today. The film features all three concerts and basically the idea was to record all three of them and then turn them into one movie that kind of gave the illusion of one evening. To achieve that, Robert Plant and John Bonham wore the same clothes all three nights. However, Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones didn't, which is why when you watch the movie you can see that Jimmy Page wears different snake suits and also John Paul's looks definitely change and vary throughout the film. There were about 20,000 people attending every concert and the crowd was absolutely ecstatic to see them. For a band that was just finishing an entire North America tour, you'd never know how tired they were judging by their incredible and extraordinary performances those three nights in the summer of 1973. They made the audience ecstatic with their rock songs and brought them to tears with their emotional tracks. The feelings you get when starting to watch that killer little drum solo John Bonham plays at the beginning. And for the next four minutes, nothing else matters but watching the golden god Robert Plant dance and sing on stage. Flanked by a dancing Jimmy Page and meticulous rhythm keeper John Paul Jones with his bass is simply indescribable. For many, these three nights in the summer of 1973 were the height of Led Zeppelin's career. They played fantastically and the audience was blown away by their ability to make unique music and play incredible live shows. Maybe it was because there wasn't really a lot of tapes of the band performing, but the audience was stunned to see them play live. During those three nights, they took their audience on a journey through a musical world beyond their imagination. And that is truly why I would have loved to attend these concerts. I feel like Led Zeppelin is such a unique and incredible band and the energy that they must have radiated on stage is absolutely undescribable. If you watch the movie you kind of get a sense of it but I have the feeling that the feeling and the vision back then and seeing them live was overwhelming and otherworldly. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was planning on doing more steps to this makeup look and adding like some very deep color, but the more that I look at it, I really like how light it is. I think that really heavy and dark makeup is great for a Queen concert or an ACDC concert, but I feel like Led Zeppelin was also a very light band, even though their sound was very heavy and dark. They also had their light moments and I kind of want to keep the makeup the way that it is right now. But if you would like to add more, you could definitely add some black elements, an eyeliner, maybe even smudge it, do something like that. But because of what I'm wearing, I feel like this is the perfect look. And this series is also a little bit about myself and what I would have worn and did for my makeup. And I feel like I definitely go more by this like lighter makeup look. I feel like this is Led Zeppelin, it's me, and it's just perfect for this concert in the summer of 1973. However, there is one more thing I want to add to the look and that is this necklace. It's a gorgeous necklace with lilac stones, but I don't want to wear it as a necklace. I was thinking about wearing it around my head sort of like this. I think it's such a cool and unique look and perfect for Led Zeppelin. So let me just sort of put it on my head the way that I want it. I'm just kind of trying to make it a little centered and a little even. Just kind of also wanting to put it a little more forward. Something like this. I think it's great. You've probably realized by now that I love to wear my hair open for this series. And that is basically because whenever I attend a concert, I just love to have my hair down. I truly love the way that that feels. So I just twisted my hair with the Axis necklace in the back. And I'm just using a regular hair clip to kind of secure it. And then I'm covering it up with some of my hair. And that is basically everything I'm doing for this look. 
The film was released in 1976 after reshooting some sequences. They discovered that the original filming had a lot of holes in it and they didn't want to leave their audience disappointed. That's why they agreed to mimic the entire show at the Shepherd Studios in 1974 and just redo their entire live performance. However, by that time, John Paul Jones had already gotten a haircut, so he was forced to wear a wig and I feel like you can tell. Like, watching the footage, just kind of keep an eye out for his hair and you will definitely spot the difference. In early 1976, the filming of the song Remains the Same was finally completed and the movie was released. There were multiple premieres of the film in New York, Dallas and London, with the band attending every single premiere. By 1977, the movie had grossed around $10 million. Some of the members of the band regard their performance at Madison Square Garden in 1973 as merely average for the time. In a 1976 interview, Jimmy Page said, The song remains the same is not a great film, but there's no point in making excuses. It's just a reasonably honest statement of where we were at that particular time. It's very difficult for me to watch it now, but I'd like to see it in a year's time, just to see how it stands up. For all its technical flaws, many people today see it as a historical document. So just like Jimmy Page promised, he reviewed the footage in 2003, and he decided to add some more footage from different concerts to the film. So in 2007, the movie was reissued, and Jimmy McNair of Mojo Magazine wrote, the good news is that Jimmy Page and fellow production Wunderkind, Kevin Shirley, have been meticulous as regards quality control. The three-night July 1973 stint at Madison Square Garden that fueled the film's original soundtrack has been plundered afresh. In truth, 2003's DVD package houses better live performances. But if you want to catch Zeppelin in all their preposterous because we can glory, the song remains the same is the one to watch. And I truly think that captures not only the spirit of Led Zeppelin in the early 70s, but also my entire view on them as a band. Led Zeppelin didn't only stand out for their incredible music, but also for who they were as people. Their fans and audiences loved them for their looks, everything that they did on stage, for being such great entertainers and the way that they made music like no others did. They truly had that we do things because we just can attitude to them and I would have loved to see them live in the summer of 1973. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you liked this part of the concert series. I'm gonna put up some clips now of the finished makeup and my entire outfit so you can properly see everything that I've done. I truly hope you enjoyed this video and if you did I would love you to give it a thumbs up and maybe even share it with a friend. It supports me, it supports the channel and it would mean the world. If you recreate this makeup look I would love to see it. Make sure to tag me at Emma Rosa Katarina on Instagram and TikTok and wherever you upload it I would definitely love to see it. Also if you come up with a different look for a Led Zeppelin concert please 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 tag me I want to see all of your looks. If you attended this concert or you know someone who did and you have a story to share, please leave it in the comments. I read every single comment and I try to reply to as many as possible. So if you've seen this concert, you know someone who saw it and who told you a story about it, or you've seen Led Zeppelin live on a different occasion, please, please, please share your story in the comments. Also leave a comment suggesting a new concert, a different band, someone else you would like me to get ready for a concert. I love to do this series, especially with the ongoing virus and world in lockdown. I feel like this is a great outlet, at least for me, to feel that concert spirit again. So if you have any recommendation, make sure to leave them in a comment down below. If you're interested in all things 60s and 70s, like the makeup, the fashion, the people and the pop culture, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I upload new videos every single week and I would love to have you around. 
I hope you have a wonderful day. Go out, enjoy the sunshine, take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today and I will catch you in the next one. Bye everyone.